my damn, turn this shit off. The heater is not because I'm a pussy, it is to keep the um, camera from fogging up. <laughs> uh, kill me now. Right then, so uh, someone asked me a question the other day saying, can you do a video explaining how jetting actually works, like fundamentally physics and stuff? It's quite, it's really quite simple. Um, but I need to find that red pen. I've just chucked everything on here because reasons. There we go, red. I need red just because red is, red is dead or something. Right then. <laughs> So it's, it's quite simple. If I draw this in a different way, it'll be a lot easier to understand. So let's just look at a tube that's like this, all right? And in this tube, we have some fluid. And in this tube, we have some fluid, like so, all right? And then in here, we have a venturi, all right? Give it some wall thickness so it doesn't just look like a crazy line. So what happens is we flow air through here like this, right? And what's keeping this fluid at a level is how much fluid there is in this, the volume of the fluid, the volume of the container, there's also, we need to look at all the forces that are involved. So there's gravity that just pulls on the whole system, right? So we can just, because it pulls on the entire system, everything, we can kind of just ignore that it's there, right? That's kind of what we do. We don't constantly think, got to move my feet because of gravity. You just, you just get on with it. So then we have to look at the other forces that are involved. So the other forces that are involved are... There's air pressure. So there's air pressure there, and we'll just call that one atmosphere. Yeah, we get that. There's air pressure here, right? And then there's air pressure here, and there's air pressure here, right? Just air pressure. So what's happening is, is that we are flowing, we're creating a volume over here. Our piston's going down, it's creating a void of nothing. So all of this atmospheric pressure is constantly, it's like the raptors out of Jurassic Park, they're testing the fence for weaknesses, right? All these molecules bouncing around everywhere are testing. And what happens is, is now and then they go, oh, there's a fucking hole there, and they go in, right? And these other ones that are bouncing around, hitting each other here, well, they would hit this one, but it's fucked off down there. So they end up eventually, due to chaotic motion, end up just spilling down there. They end up all, and not all, they all end up just, some, not all, some, end up just flying down there just randomly. It's a massive pinball fucking effort that's constantly just going mental, right? So what happens is, is with a Venturi, when you pass it through this narrow passage, they there's a car crash, right? You get a pressure here, a build-up as they're all trying to ram down here. So you get a pressure head here, basically the pressure increases here, and then that pressure is what squeezes it through, yeah? So it's like it's like this is a tube of toothpaste and we're squeezing it. Because it's in motion, when the motion doesn't matter, we've now stopped this, but it's flowing through. It's like putting your finger over a horse pipe, so a lot less water gets through, but it goes faster. So, this, just say this is 10 velocities, it doesn't matter what it is. This is now 20 velocities, it's sped up. But when you speed something like this up, you're in a sense stretching it. So imagine that this glove here is our 10, when this is 20, it's stretched, right? It's speeding away from itself, It's the, or the, the air is just expanding out that way. When it does that, it basically leaves room so that's actually not a bad idea. If I get this glove and just draw some circles on it equally spaced, the best I can in five seconds. So like so, so you can see that there's, oh fuck's sake, like that. What we do is we're speeding up the air. And if you see now gaps have, gaps have appeared in a sense. 
it's a crude way of describing it, but whatever. So this was air pressure. Let's give these numbers now. We just labelled where air pressure is everywhere, right? That's exposed to the air. This has now dropped. This is not. This is. It had an air pressure. But let's just say. Let's just say atmospheric is a hundred. Right. Let's just say it's a hundred atmospheres. Right. Whatever doesn't matter. So we'll say that this is a hundred pushing down on here. This we'll get to in a second. This out here is a hundred, right? This one. And in here, piston's gone down. We've doubled our speed, so we're gonna half this. This is now 50, right? Uh, let's just put P, let's just put pressures. 100 pressures, and this is what happens here, right? Because this is 50, this is being forced by 100 out this way, right? There's still a pressure against it, there's still a force against it, but it's now this 50, right? It's this 50 pressures. And we can now just forget all this shit. Forget it all. We know where that 50 comes from, so let's get rid of it. All right, we've just got this. We've just got our carb section. All right, just like that. So now we've got a pushing contest. So if we take a cross section here, we've got 100 pushing this way and we've got 50 trying to counteract it. That means we get a push, a net push of 50 this way. So what happens is, is the fluid comes out, right? This fluid level rises like this. And as long as you're pumping air through this Venturi, this will be a flow, right? This will flow this way, just continuously. Right, until the state changes. That's just what's happening. So, what does this look like in real life? So we've got our 100 side and our 50 side. If we look at a carb, what we've got is we have a fuel ball in our carb, right? And then we have this jet like this. Now, to make this even easier to understand, we're going to do this. So there's our tube from before. And let's just say our fuel level is here like this, right? And let's just say there's holes in the side of this so it can get in, right? Wonderful. Let's just make these walls a bit thicker so you can see a lot better. So what's happening is, is we have our 100 pushing down, which is our atmospheres, and we have 50 pushing down here. It loses, so the fuel level gets drawn up. Now, as the fuel gets drawn up this way, what's going to happen is, is our fuel level is going to go down. And that's why we have a valve with floats. So we have a float with a valve and more fuel from the fuel tank can come in, but not too much. We want to keep this level right. The other thing we need as well is this. This is all sealed up. This is inside a carb and this is your carb bottom before you get to your Venturi. There is always an air vent in a carb, right? Always. This is why if you turn a carb upside down, it'll fucking leak. The 100, the atmospheric pressure needs to get in to apply this 100 to this you know, to this um, your fuel line. It just has to be there. If you have a blocked one, then no fuel will come out. It'll be trying to draw it out and it won't have none of it. So, how do jets work? Um, well, what we want to do is want to meter how big this is. And that's all a jet is. A jet, you imagine you've just got your tube here like this. Our tube here like this. A jet is just an insert, a screwing insert. So it has a thread on the outside with a hole, with a hole that can have varying sizes. It's just like having, it's just like having the tips on an icing thing for cakes, right? You can have different tips to do different things, you know what I mean? Different sizes. It's like having pens, pens with different tips. Jets are there, they just restrict and control the amount of fuel that can run through this. 
If you want more fuel because your engine is drawing in more air for some magical reason, then you'll upjet. If you are flooding it out and running far too rich, you'll get a smaller jet. It is literally just a restrictor. It is a fuel restrictor. And it basically, like I say, just goes in here. Just goes in there. And they're used in all sorts of places within the system. They're not just for your fueling. Well, they are for fueling, but for all the different circuits in a carb that have different types of fueling, like startup stuff like that. Cold start, blah, 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 blah. So as you can see, that's all it is. The jet is just a restrictor that controls this flow, this flow of fuel. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, the intake stroke is only so long. So if you can restrict this, you can control the fueling. Obviously, fuel injectors get rid of this. All they do is just change the duration of how long they leave the injectors open for. Hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit. Whew. Two minutes left on the camera. Woo.